This is the topic for cycle two homework video where we're looking at elastic energy and elastic force. So we're going to talk about three states for a spring. One is equilibrium, where it would be if no force has acted upon it. One is compressed, that means you squished it. The other is stretched, stretched out. So if we squish the spring, the spring is going to push back against us. So the force, the elastic force, is in the opposite direction of the displacement or the distance it moved. So we moved it up, it's pushing back down. Um, on the other hand, if we stretch it, we stretch it out, it's pulling back towards the equilibrium. So what this is really showing you is where the negative comes from. That negative is saying it's opposite the direction we moved it, so it's trying to pull back towards equilibrium. So I'm always moving it away from that equilibrium point if I'm exerting an unbalanced force upon it. Uh, X is the distance it moved. K describes the type of spring, like um, how soft or how hard the spring is where um, we could compare, for example, the spring in a car to the spring in your watch. And we call that Hooke's Law, um, that the force of a spring is negative kx, opposite the direction of the displacement, times this constant that describes what type of, um, what type of spring it is. Remember that the length we're talking about is the length that's squished or stretched, not the length of the spring itself. Minus is telling us that the force is opposite the direction of the stretch or squeeze, and so those are key things to remember. Let's look at what K is, the spring constant. So soft springs change uh, length a lot for a smaller force, whereas uh, strong springs change very little. So like an automotive spring, autom automotive would be strong, a watch spring would be soft. So watch spring, very small value of K, automotive spring, very large value of K. Just saying how many newtons of force it takes it to move one meter. Now this only holds up, holds up to a point. Um, where if you stretch a spring too far, it will no longer have that value. Just like if you stretch your slinky too far, it will no longer hold its shape or come back to equilibrium. Okay, pause now to take an opportunity to answer the multiple choice question. The force that a spring exert is equal to, uh, which is the best answer here. Um, feel free to go back in the video to review what we've already talked about, or what I've talked about. And then go onto the Google form answer and come back to the video to watch the rest about elastic energy and answer your uh, FRQ, your free response question. Okay, so the first portion of the video looked at the force exerted by a spring. Now we know force is a push or a pull, a transfer of energy. Um, we're gonna look at how much energy is transferred as a result of that force. So force and energy going hand in hand here. So energy stored in a spring. Uh, we know a lot about triangles. We know that they equal one half, the area of a triangle equals one half the base times the height. Um, force times displacement is work or the energy transferred. So transfer of energy is work. We know it's force times displacement. If we look at the force here vertically, and the displacement horizontally, the displacement is x, the distance in meters. The force we found was kx or negative kx. Um, when we multiply those two times each other, we get one half kx squared. The one half because it's not a full square, so one half base times height. The base is x. The height is kx. So to find our energy, it's one half kx squared. So that distance you you stretch or squish a spring is very important. So one thing to consider is what happens if the force changes with displacement, like if something pushes harder or less hard as it's displaced more. Um, that's an interesting one to consider. Um, just a reminder about the work that we just discussed in the formula. Here is our formula for elastic energy. And you can see it equals one half kx squared. We'll call it elastic potential energy. It's potential because it's stored until you release that spring. So just like gravitational potential energy, it's stored until you release an object and it drops. So all different types of potential energy, um, kinetic energy, dissipated energy that elastic potential energy can be converted into. And just some reminders of what the formula is for k and for x. Now, this is just one more type of energy, but the conservation of energy is still key. Energy is still conserved. It's just transferred from one type to another. So we've just added one more type of energy that we have, EE, elastic energy, to the formula. Just reminders of the formulas we've gone over for kinetic, potential, and elastic potential of what each part means, and that we know the sum of the total energy. When we add all these energies up, our total energy remains the same. That means we'll have problems where you might not know one of these, but you know the total energy. 
and you can use that to solve for how much energy is left to solve for the spring constant or the distance it was displaced or perhaps like we've done in the past something from the gravitational potential energy or kinetic energy. Okay, here's your free response question. How does the marble cannon launching the marble to start marble run, how is that an example of the conservation of energy? Um, just like we did in our Explore Lab. So where did the energy come from? How was total energy conserved? Um, think back on your lab. You might want to refer to your lab where we did that diagram of transfers of energy at different points. And then how does elastic energy play a part? You should talk about um, where the energy comes from that starts the energy for the marble run. Where does it end up? How does it change along the way? But your answer does not need to be more than two to three sentences to have a nice thorough answer. Please feel free to go back on the video and answer in the Google form and then uh, make sure to submit it and check your email that you got a response.